Hi YouTube, just doing a quick video here of how to make a do-it-yourself uh, PVC enclosure for an aquarium heater. Um, this is essentially so that you can get rid of the heater from inside your tank and have it outside your tank. Uh, of course, you need to have a way to hook this up to a pump and hoses so that you can take water from the tank and push it through the enclosure which the heater is going to be inside and then return it back to the tank. This is essentially extremely easy if you're already using an outgoing external filter or canister filter. Um, I'm using a Sun Sun 525 gallon, I think it's HW304B. Um, and so I'm planning on hooking it up uh, to the hose that comes out. I think they're three quarter inch hoses. And um, so the outgoing from my filter will plug into a three quarter inch barbed adapter here. And then we'll have a three quarter inch barbed adapter here. Um, so that will then return to the tank. So the parts I have here, um, I had originally seen this from the um, king of do-it-yourself, Joey, uh, from the aquarium hobby, and thought I'd do my own video because I use a little bit different parts, um, just going into a little more details what those parts were because it was very unclear to me what was what in his video, and he covers things very fast. Um, and so I thought we'd do a little more detail. So in this particular instance, I have a 300 watt uh, Eheim Jaeger aquarium heater. This is a glass. And at the top here, we have a Uniseal, which is something that Joey had introduced myself to. Um, this is a three quarter inch rubber Uniseal. It uses compression. Um, to form a watertight seal. I bought that from bulkreefsupply.com. Uh, next we have a one and a quarter inch plug, which I bought from Home Depot. There's different kinds of plugs. Um, this one actually will fit perfect because I can actually fit this uniseal and push it in there perfect, just like that. And then of course the heater will go through you may have to use some kind of uh, lubricant um, or something to get that to, to fit through there. I found, if you look at the Uniseal, there's kind of a little rubber edge here, excuse me, at the top. Um, and you might just take a X-Acto knife or box cutters or something and take off that um, that little lip so it doesn't compress too much because the more it compresses the harder it's going to be to fit that glass heater through there so let's just kind of put this together um, so we have the one and a quarter inch plug the uh, three quarter inch uniseal bulkhead um, then we're going to insert that into just a one and a quarter inch uh, coupler here so I, I went with a one and a quarter inch pipe um, as these are pretty big beefy heaters so I wanted to have plenty of room in between the glass from the heater and the pipe interior wall so we've got the plug is going to fit perfectly into the coupler um, and obviously you'll be cementing that I would suggest I've got a, a red hot blue glue PVC pipe cement here and then we have a one and a quarter inch T uh, fitting um, I'll need to cut a chunk of this one and a quarter inch pipe and put it in between here um, to be able to connect these. Um, off the T we have a uh, reducer bushing. So this is going to be one and a quarter inch on the outside and it's reducing down to three quarter inch threaded. So this can insert directly into here. And again, we want to cement that, and then we can use our three quarter inch barb um, fitting here and thread it in here. And um, as you can see on this one, I had used the Teflon tape, but I really don't think it does a very good job. I was getting a little bit of leaking going on. Um, this is the second adapter or uh, inline heater I've been 
uh, that I'm creating, the one I had the other day, was leaking, so I hadn't ended up taking off the Teflon tape and using this right here. Rector Seal Soft Set 5 Pipe Thread Sealant. I got this at Home Depot. Uh, essentially, you just put the this goo all over the threads and thread it in. Um, it doesn't actually harden. It just performs a watertight seal somehow. All right, so then we have the T, which we're going to just slip directly onto this thread, or excuse me, the pipe. Um, again, you want to use cement. And the pipe, I bought a two foot section of pipe um, from uh, Aces Hardware. So once I figure out exactly how I'm gonna have, how long I'm gonna have this thing, it's probably gonna be sticking out just like that from the end. And so I'll probably cut the pipe, you know, somewhere around here. So assume this is the end of the pipe for now. We have another one and a quarter inch coupler here which will go on the pipe again cemented and then on the end we have another one and a quarter by three and a quarter inch reducer this one looks a little bit different than this one um, it's just one was from Aces hardware and one was from Home Depot but either of them will work so um, these are all uh, slip type so you just use cement glue and you slip them in push them in as far as you can and then of course it's got the three quarter inch threads so we use our three quarter inch um, threaded barbed adapter and the thread sealant and we would thread that in there and then of course so you hook up your hose there and then you hook up your hose here and the water depending on which way you have it hooked up the water is going to go up and then down and out so it's going past the the heater the whole time or you can reverse it. It really, I don't think it matters. Um, one thing you want to do is figure out a way to try and keep this heater in the pipe so that it's not just laying against the wall. Usually they'll come with something for mounting it to the aquarium uh, glass. You could adapt that and make it so it's kind of a spacer so it, it holds it off of the pipe a little bit so it's more centered within the diameter of the pipe, if that makes sense, um, so that the water can flow past it easier. So that, that's it. I'll show you what it looks like in just a few minutes here. All right, so here is the completed uh, project. Literally the hardest part is, for me anyways, is drilling the hole in the top plug. Um, it's kind of a pain because if you put it in a vise, it wants to kind of squeeze or compress the pipe and then it's hard to get the uh, drill bit, which is a one and a quarter inch um, drill bit um, in there because the exact space, you know, it'll fit perfectly without compressing it in the vise, but once you compress it in the vise, it's, it's kind of hard to, to um, drill out the bottom of the plug. But, um, and then the other hard part, not really hard but just kind of difficult is pushing the heater through the uniseal um, because it's such a tight fit I didn't use any lubricant or anything that probably would have made it a lot easier but I just kind of put my weight into it and and it slowly slides through the uniseal until you get it all the way in so as you can see um, just to go through it there's the uniseal which just uses compression to go into the top plug which is this slender piece here, you can't see it because it's inserted into this coupler. I use glue to glue it into the coupler. Um, there's a one and a quarter inch pipe inside here that you can't see that joins the coupler to the T. This is all one, one and a quarter inch. Um, and then here we have the reducer which goes from one and a quarter inch uh, slip. It slips in here and glues in. And then it has the three quarter inch thread which is where we screwed in the three quarter inch um, barb into it. And so that yellow stuff is that thread sealant I was talking about. Um, and of course this, uh, the reducer just glues directly into the T here. And then we've got the three quarter inch, or one and a quarter inch pipe glued into the one and a quarter inch T coupler. And then on the other end, 
We had another one and a quarter inch coupler, which is glued onto the pipe. And then we had another one and a quarter inch reducer to three quarter inch thread. Um, so that just slipped into here and was glued. And then we used the thread sealant again um, to screw the three quarter inch uh, threaded and barb into it. So there we have it. All right, so just showing the uh, inline heater uh, hooked up. This is actually not the one that I just did the video of. This is the first one I did. Um, the only real difference uh, is the top here. Instead of doing a one and a quarter inch uh, slip coupler, uh, it's actually half of it is slip, so it slipped onto the one and a quarter inch pipe. You can't see that's underneath it. And then the top is threaded. Um, so I used a threaded uh, plug at the top which of course was drilled through so that the uniseal could go in it. But um, this, it's a little bit more expensive than just a slip coupler, but the advantage to it is that it is threaded here, so it's not gonna be glued sealed. So if you ever wanted to, you know, I could, with the sealant, the thread sealant, it's not like a glue. So I could technically unscrew this and, um, you know, clean it out nice and be, it'd be nicer, to, easier to get into. So anyways, um, the Sun Sun canister here, here's the outgoing from the canister. And I have it going up. And then um, I used actually a, a elbow three quarter inch barb here. So it pushes the water in. It can't go too high because it gets stuck at the plug. So it goes down and then it comes out the elbow here as well. I used the elbow on this one. And then this hose just goes up um, and uh, returns to the tank. Um, so I have the holes in the bottom of my tank. It's an acrylic tank. Um, and then this is a, uh, a quick disconnect. So if I ever want to clean out the pipe, I can just unscrew this. Um, and this is to stop or open or adjust the flow um, on the uh, outtake inside the tank. If you have any questions or anything, just uh, let me know. Thanks for watching.